With Attack on Titan's final episode releasing soon, here is your no-nonsense recap for the entirety of Attack on Titan. Also, this is your last time we'll be able to do something like this, so for the memories, drop a like, subscribe, and leave a comment on what Attack on Titan has meant to you over the years. As well, I cover JJK, Invincible, One Piece, and Chainsaw Man, so if you love anime or animation, this is the place for you. Years ago, within the sun-starved underground district, a place seldom touched by sunlight, Levi operated as a member of a thieving crew in tandem with his partner, Ferlin Church. They employed maneuver gear to orchestrate a series of heists, offering mutual support in their criminal endeavors. During this time, they crossed paths with a girl named Isabel Magnolia, who had been pursued by guards for her attempts to rescue an injured bird and bring it back to the surface. They chose to welcome Isabel into their fold. As time passed, an enigmatic surface-dwelling individual manipulated Levi, Ferlin, and Isabel by holding a hostage, coercing them into undertaking a mission. The mission's successful completion promised them a coveted citizenship on the surface. While evading the clutches of the military police during their mission, the trio was unexpectedly apprehended by the Survey Corps headed by Erwin Smith. Erwin extended an offer. In exchange for joining the Survey Corps, he would absolve Levi and his companions of their criminal records. Levi, Ferlin, and Isabel embark on their journey as members of the Survey Corps, much to the chagrin of their watchful superior, Flagon. As they adapt to their new lives, they recall the enigmatic man's request to assassinate Erwin and pilfer one of his documents. Despite a fruitless search in Erwin's office, the trio devises a scheme to ambush Erwin during an expedition. Initially, Levi plans to undertake this perilous task alone, but his resolve falters when Ferlin and Isabel convince him to allow them to accompany him. On the day of the expedition, the Survey Corps confront a horde of titans. Levi's team makes a significant contribution to their extermination, only to incur Erwin's reprimand for their profligate use of gas. Subsequently, Levi seizes the opportunity presented by a heavy rainfall to approach Erwin closely. However, upon his return, he is confronted by a brutal sight. The rest of his squad, including Ferlin and Isabel, has fallen prey to a titan ambush. This traumatic event sends Levi into a frenzy as he faces the last remaining titan. Upon discovering that Erwin had carried a counterfeit document throughout their mission, rendering their efforts meaningless, Levi, adhering to his upbringing of having no regrets, resolves to persist in following Erwin as a dedicated member of the Survey Corps. For a century, humanity has found refuge within colossal walls, Wall Maria, Wall Rose, and Wall Sheena, shielding them from the ravenous titans, gigantic humanoid creatures. Aaron Yeager, hailing from Shinganshina District, yearns to explore the outside world, disliking the feeling of being caged in the cities like livestock. His desire to join the Scout Regiment, despite the perilous casualties they face, this builds a desire for Eren to join the Scout Regiment despite the perilous casualties they face, which deeply troubles his friend Mikasa and their mother, Carla. Even Carla's opposition can't sway Eren and his father, Grisha Jaeger, promises to reveal the secrets of their basement when he returns. After saving Armin Arlert from some troublemakers, a colossal 60-meter titan suddenly breaches the gate to Shinganshina District, located at the edge of Wall Maria, allowing smaller titans to flood in. Panic engulfs the town, and as Eren and Mikasa run back to their home, they find Carla trapped under the debris. A smiling titan approaches, and although Carla urges them to escape, they stay and tell the city guard. Hannes arrives and promises to protect them. However, Hannes, overwhelmed by fear, eventually whisks Eren and Mikasa away, and they witness the smiling titan devouring Carla in sheer horror. Hannes apologizes to Eren for his inability to save Eren's mother, acknowledging his fear of the Smiling Titan and the young age and vulnerability of Eren and Mikasa. Some residents of Shinganshina escape to the inner Wall Maria while soldiers attempt to repel the Titans. Efforts to secure the gate are futile as the armored Titan smashes through, breaching the inner Wall Maria, prompting those inside to retreat further into Wall Rose. Later, 
Aaron has a strange dream in which his desperate father administers an ejection and passes on a key. Aaron's growing disillusionment with the Wall Rose inhabitants arises from the reluctance to share provisions or shelter with refugees. Subsequently, the government confronts a food shortage crisis, compelling refugees to either work on farms or engage in the fight to reclaim Wall Maria. Approximately 250,000 people, representing 20% of the human population, opt to join the battle but ultimately succumb to the Titans. This tragic loss fuels Eren's determination for revenge, leading him to enlist in the army alongside Mikasa and Armin. Drill instructor Keith Shaddix rigorously inspects the 104th Cadet Corps recruits, delivering harsh criticisms. Sasha Browse, caught snacking on a potato, faces punishment, a day of running without food or drink. Meanwhile, Aaron enters a rivalry with John Kirstein, who aims for a safe military police regiment position within the inner city walls. They train on omnidirectional mobility gear, where Aaron seeks help from Reiner Braun and Barclophagus Hoover. The next day, Aaron's gear fails, but Keith provides a second chance with different equipment, allowing him to pass. In the year 850, while Aaron and his comrades are undergoing their training, the scout regiment embarks on a mission. Hanj, driven by curiosity, decides to pursue a titan spotted in the forest, hoping to capture it for research. As she lures the titan towards her, it inexplicably retreats deeper into the forest. Hanj tracks it to the heart of the woods, where she discovers the titan repeatedly slamming its head against a particular tree. When she approaches, the titan turns aggressive, but Levi and his team intervene, ultimately eliminating the creature. This outcome saddens Hanj. Upon investigating the scene, they make a grisly discovery. The decapitated body of Eyes Langanar, a soldier from the 34th Scout Regiment Division, concealed within the tree. A notebook belonging to her lies nearby, containing her detailed records. It reveals that after her squad was slaughtered by titans, she managed to escape on foot. Later, she found herself cornered by a titan, but instead of instantly attacking her, it began conversing with her in the human language, addressing her as Ymir. Eyes made an attempt to communicate with the titan, but it eventually turned hostile once more, beheading her. Strangely, the titan chose not to consume her body, but rather place it inside the tree. After reviewing Eyes' notes, Hanj persuades Erwin to authorize operations for capturing titans alive and studying them, using the notebook as leverage. They also return Isa's belongings to her grief-stricken family. In the year 849, John returns home after two years of intensive training. Upon his arrival, a heated disagreement with Sasha ensues following a training exercise. In response to the dispute, Commander Pixis suggests they settle their differences in a friendly cooking contest. With Armin and Annie teaming up with John and Reiner and Connie joining forces with Sasha, the two groups venture into the forest in pursuit of a notorious giant boar to serve as the main ingredient. Sasha's team is the first to locate the boar, leading to a fierce battle in which Sasha emerges victorious, claiming the boar for her group. Meanwhile, John is visited by his mother and their interaction leaves him feeling embarrassed. In an attempt to outshine Sasha, he devises a plan to steal high-quality beef from the office, but Armin and Annie decline to assist him. John eventually abandons his scheme. Instead, he opens a lunchbox thoughtfully prepared by his mother, which contains a simple yet heartwarming omelette. This gesture triggers memories of the support he received from his mother throughout his life. The cooking competition swiftly commences, with Sasha presenting a delicate boar steak and John showcasing his modest omelet. Despite being impressed by the exceptional taste of Sasha's steak, Commander Pixis declares John the winner, acknowledging his superior culinary skills. Satisfied with his victory, John contemplates paying a visit to his mother, recognizing the significance of her unwavering support. In the year 848, the new recruits are divided into two groups as part of the wilderness exercise designed to teach them self-sufficiency during times of peace. Marco faces a challenging task as the leader of his group, dealing with overbearing personalities of both Aaron and John. On the other hand, Mikasa's group becomes aware of the presence of gangs of thieves who manage to steal their omnidirectional mobility gear, a critical piece of equipment. Their situation becomes dire when the thieves take Krista hostage, along with their stolen gear. Faced with this crisis, the group puts aside their internal conflicts and focuses on a common goal, rescuing Krista. 
In their pursuit of the thieves, the group successfully recovers their maneuver equipment and intercepts the thieves' wagons. A tense standoff unfolds, during which Krista is held hostage at knife point. However, the day is saved by the timely arrival of Mikasa and Annie, who respond to Armin's signal for help. With the thieves apprehended and no casualties incurred, Armin speculates whether the thieves' attack may have been orchestrated as part of the exercise all along, leaving the recruits to ponder the lessons learned from their intense ordeal. Five years after Wal Maria's fall, Keith diligently evaluates new recruits, identifying strengths and weaknesses. After grueling combat training with Reiner and Annie, Aaron receives surprising news. John and other recruits aspire to join the military police regiment, avoiding direct Titan confrontations. Graduation day arrives, with Aaron and Mikasa ranking in the top 10. While they qualify for the military police, Aaron shocks everyone by opting for the scout regiment, leading Armin and Mikasa to join. They reunite in Trost District, but their hopes shatter as the colossal titan breaches the city gates. Aaron takes charge, rallying a counterattack. The colossal titan damages the wall's cannons, but disappears in a cloud of steam before Aaron can strike its weak point. As the titans approach Trost District, the military police regiment evacuates citizens and fortifies defenses. Mikasa aids in the evacuation, while Aaron and Armin assist on the front lines. They remember that the Titans can only be defeated by striking their next nape. In the ensuing battle, their comrades are killed, Aaron loses a leg, and Armin narrowly escapes being devoured. In a desperate act, Aaron sacrifices his arm to save Armin from a bearded Titan's grasp but is swallowed whole. Armin regains consciousness, reunited with Connie, Krista, and Ymir. He returns to the rear guard, plagued by guilt for not saving Eren. Meanwhile, a rogue titan approaches the crowded exit gate, and Mikasa eliminates it. She forces a greedy merchant to prioritize refugee passage. This triggers a flashback to a traumatic event in Mikasa's past where she was targeted by slave traders who murdered her parents. Eren intervened, and with his encouragement, Mikasa summoned the strength to kill the third traitor. Eventually, she joined Eren and Grisha. In the present, Mikasa helps other squads evacuate while battling Titans. Surviving squads, hindered by low gas and their omnidirectional mobility gear, lose morale as Titans overrun the nearby supply depot. After hearing that Eren and Armin's squad perished, Mikasa remains resolute. She leads an effort to reclaim the supply depot, but her gear runs out causing her to fall into an alley. John briefly assumes command, but panics as he witnesses comrades being devoured by titans. As a blonde titan approaches Mikasa, she prepares to attack with her broken blade. However, a mysterious titan appears and kills the blonde titan. Armin and Connie arrive, surprised to see the mysterious titan battling others while demonstrating knowledge of their weaknesses and hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Armin gives Mikasa his gear and blades, but she's reluctant to leave him, perplexed by the mysterious titan's peculiar actions. Armin's plan involves using the mysterious titan to draw the titans away from the supply depot. With the help of Mikasa and Connie, they clear out the titans attacking the mysterious titan. Meanwhile, John and his group reach the supply depot, albeit with more losses along the way. Armin's strategy is effective, but seven smaller titans remain in the fuel storage area, and their gear is depleted. Armin comes up with a new plan. They lead the titans to an elevator and blind them with eye shots, allowing others to attack from above. Mikasa and Annie save Sasha and Connie from their targets, and with their fuel replenished, the soldiers prepare to retreat. They then witness the mysterious titan defeating the others and are shocked when Eren emerges from its body. Mikasa is overjoyed by Eren's survival and Armin notices Eren's regenerated limb. Captain Levi and his squad reclaim a town from the titans but are urgently called to the Tross district, which is under titan attack. When Eren is consumed by the bearded titan, he finds himself within its stomach alongside its victims. Fueled by rage, he transforms into the mysterious Titan, rampaging against them. Despite his comrades witnessing his emergence, they decide to keep it a secret and aim to take him back within Wall Rose. However, Commander Kitts discovers this and orders his men to point their weapons at Eren. Armin and Mikasa defend Eren, but their efforts are in vain, as Kitts orders the cannons to fire on them. Eren recalls his father's vague memories, urging him to reclaim Wall Maria and visit their basement using the key. To shield Mikasa and Armin from the cannons, 
Aaron partially transforms into a Titan, providing shelter within his rib cage. Aaron emerges from the partially transformed Titan, sharing with Mikasa and Armin his relief that the secrets to humanity's survival and Titan destruction lie within his former house's basement. Commander Kitts remains fearful and orders the cannons prepared once more. Aaron suggests two escape plans, one, retreating as a Titan to be seen as an enemy threat to humanity, and two, having Armin persuade Kitts that Aaron could be an asset. Armin acknowledges his own fears, decides to attempt a peaceful resolution to save their lives, and he manages to convince Kitts, but the commander's fear returns and he orders the cannons to be fired. Commander Dot Pixis and his forces intervene, sparing them. Pixis requests Aaron's assistance in blocking the breach in Wall Rose, preventing more Titans from entering. Aaron agrees, despite the uncertainty of his Titan control. As Armin assists in Pixis' plan coordination, troop morale drops, with some contemplating desertion to reunite with their families. But Pixis quiets their fears by emphasizing that abandoning this chance to triumph over the Titans will only expose their families to further terror, convincing the troops to stand their ground. Pixis lays out a plan. Most troops will gather at a distant point in the Tross district to draw Titans away, while Aaron, guarded by elite garrison members, Ian, Dietrich, Rico Brzezinska, and Mitabi Jamak will carry a colossal boulder to seal the breach. As they approach the boulder, Rico, doubting the mission's success and Aaron's trustworthiness, reminds him of the lives hanging in the balance. And when they reach the boulder, Aaron transforms into a Titan, but unexpectedly attacks Mikasa. Mikasa's attempts to reason with the Titan Aaron prove futile as he continues his assault but inadvertently injures himself, collapsing. The guarding squad signals a failed mission with a red flare, disappointing the troops on the wall. Armin approaches Aaron and the elite squadron despite disputes, opts to protect Aaron, recognizing his military value. Meanwhile, John is separated from Connie and Annie due to the gear malfunctions and hides from the two titans in a building. Armin, reaching Aaron, receives a warning from Mikasa about his perilous condition. To rouse Aaron from his state, Armin impales him with a blade, reminding him of the world beyond and their vow to annihilate the Titans, bringing Eren back to control. John secures a new set of omnidirectional mobility gear and escapes with assistance of Annie, Connie, and Marco, who distracts the Titans. While Eren, in Titan form, transports the boulder to seal the gate. Ian orders strict protection for him. Eren successfully seals the gate, marked by Rico's yellow flare, signaling the mission success. Armin attempts to extract Aaron from his Titan form, but faces two approaching Titans, only to be rescued by Levi in the nick of time. All Titans in Trost District are vanquished, with two captured for research. At missed casualties, John, Sasha, and Annie mourn their fallen comrades. Meanwhile, Aaron is confined in a cell under the guard of the military police regiment and visited by Levi and Scout Regiment's commander, Erwin Smith. After hearing Aaron's story and his resolve to eradicate the Titans, Levi allows him to join his squad, warning of severe consequences for betrayal or loss of control. In court, the public remains divided on whether Aaron is their savior or their downfall. Aaron faces a military tribunal led by Commander-in-Chief Dallas Zachary, who must decide if Aaron should be handed to the military police regiment or the scout regiment, each with their own agendas. The military police regiment aims to eliminate Aaron as a perceived threat, while the scout regiment sees him as the key to reclaim Wall Maria. Aaron lashes out at the military police regiment and their supporters for their cowardice. Levi, however, responds by beating Aaron severely, but Aaron doesn't transform into a titan. Levi uses this to demonstrate that the scout regiment can control Aaron and suggests he join his squad. In the end, Zachary entrusts Aaron to the scout regiment, welcomed by Erwin and Hanj Zo. While receiving treatment for his injuries, they notice Aaron regrowing a knocked out tooth, further demonstrating his regenerative abilities. Levi and his special operations squad, including Eldegin, Aluo Bazad, Petra Rall, and Gunther Schultz, take Aaron to the former scout regiment headquarters to help him master his titan powers. While Levi organizes the cleaning of the castle, Petra assures Aaron that Levi generally cares for his subordinates despite his brusque demeanor. Erwin contemplates the importance of demonstrating Aaron's value to military command within a month. Hanj invites Aaron to assist in experiments involving the captured titans named Sonny and Bean, 
revealing her peculiar fascination with titans as if they were sentient beings. It is disclosed that titans require sunlight to survive, however, and their bodies are surprisingly lightweight given their massive size. The following day, the scout regiment finds Sonny and Bean dead. Hanj grieves for them, and the scout regiment concludes that a soldier, armed with omnidirectional mobility gear, is the culprit, leaving Aaron to question the true identity of their adversary. As the recruits are investigated over Sonny and Bean's death, Annie, who will be joining the military police regiment later, gives advice to Armin and Connie that it is their choice to decide on which military division they should join. The 104th cadets are later greeted by Erwin at the decision ceremony, where he tells them that the goal of the scout regiment's expedition in the following month is to reclaim the Shinganshina district and find the secret hidden in the basement of Eren's home. After telling the recruits of the scout regiment's high mortality rate during each expedition, Erwin tells the recruits that they must stay and join them or leave to join the other branches. Most recruits leave, but John joins the scout regiment in honor of Marco with others joining him as well, including Mikasa, Armin Reiner, Barclophagus, Connie, Sasha, Krista, and Ymir, despite their fears. As the scout regiment prepares themselves for the expedition, Aaron is reunited with his friends and learns what happened to the others. John questions whether Aaron can truly control his Titan powers as they are risking their lives for him. With everything ready, the Scout Regiment begin their 57th expedition beyond the walls. In the Stohes District Military Police Base, Annie expresses her need for a day off to her roommate, Hitch. In exchange, she agrees to assist in locating Carly Stratman, who has gone missing. This leads to Annie visiting Carly's father, who seems to have limited knowledge about his daughter's whereabouts. However, Annie suspects that he might be concealing vital information. Carly's father, Stratman, is the owner of the Marlene Company, which used to engage in trade between Wal Maria and Wal Sheena. Despite this apparent wealth, the company is currently on the verge of collapsing. This incongruity raises suspicion in Annie's mind. So, Annie manages to trace Carly's presence to the Pit Riddles bar, where Carly seems to be a frequent patron possessing more money than her circumstances would suggest. In her pursuit of information, Annie employs a degree of force to extract details from Carly's boyfriend, Kempfer Bolts, from some regular customers of the establishment. The investigation takes an intriguing turn as Annie looks into Kempfer Bolts' place of residence. There, she stumbles upon a significant quality of the illicit drug, Codaline, and makes a startling discovery a lifeless body concealed beneath a bed. Annie faces a challenging predicament upon confirming that the lifeless body she discovered in the apartment belongs to Camp for Bolts. Her role as the military police officer requires her to report the discovery, putting her in a complex position. As she prepares to leave the scene, she is unexpectedly intercepted by two fellow investigators, Wald and his assistant, Lou. This situation takes a perilous turn as they threaten to eliminate Annie. She ingeniously tricks Lou into triggering her transformation into a titan. However, after returning to her human form, Lou shoots both her and Wald, inflicting a seemingly fatal wound upon Annie. Miraculously, Annie manages to recover from the fatal gunshot wound. In her wounded state, Wald provides vital information, disclosing that Stratman had hired him to locate Carly. To make matters even more complicated, Stratman is well aware of Annie's clandestine life. In his final moments, Wald divulges the Kampfer had proposed hiring them to blackmail Stratton regarding his daughter's situation and demand a ransom for her return. This revelation deeply impacts Annie. So, determined to uncover the truth, Annie tracks down Lou, eventually locating Carly and discovering their involvement in the manufacturing and distribution of Codeline, an illicit drug. To safeguard her own interests, Annie arranges for Carly's safe passage to Wall Rose and assists her father by discreetly disposing of Camphor's body. With her next mission in sight, Annie sets her sights on infiltrating the Survey Corps' 57th Reconnaissance Expedition and capturing Aaron Yeager. Within Wall Rose, Mikasa undergoes a surreal vision of an alternative family life where her parents were not met with tragedy. In this vision, she encounters Aaron, the son of Dr. Yeager. They embark on a shared journey through the woods, stumbling upon a group of wolves feasting on the bodies of potential kidnappers. To her surprise, when Aaron approaches the wolves, they inexplicably retreat. As time passes, the two children form a strong bond, with Aaron confiding in Mikasa about his friend Armin and his aspirations of joining the Survey Corps. 
even in the face of the grim reality of Titan encounters, and the sacrifices made by Survey Corps members to protect their reputation. Aaron's unwavering focus on his ambitions leaves little room for romantic feelings, leaving Mikasa with a one-sided affection. Despite her own desires to be part of Aaron's adventure, he along with Armin plan to leap over the wall using a hot air balloon. Mikasa yearns to join them, but her path is obstructed by a mysterious masked figure known as the Man of the Mirror who disguises himself as a magician. He shares foreboding words about turning her into a killer and issues a grim prophecy about Eren's fate. Mikasa, driven by her determination to be with Eren, seemingly confronts and eliminates the masked man, only to discover it was a masterful illusion. Unperturbed, she proceeds to the rendezvous point where she anticipates reuniting with her friends. There, she encounters Armin, who delivers the heart-wrenching news that Eren made the ultimate sacrifice to save Armin during the hot air balloon escape. Returning to the present, Mikasa experiences a profound realization. She understands that Eren is destined to follow a unique path, and her unwavering commitment is to stand by his side through all of the trials and tribulations that lie ahead. During the 57th expedition, the scout regiment adopts the long-range scouting formation, spreading out around the main wagon train to detect titans using flares. Armin's squad takes down an abnormal titan, but a swift and formidable female titan emerges from the right flank. Shockingly, the female titan survives their attacks and proves to be intelligent, killing Armin's comrades. After capturing Armin and seeing his face, the female titan spares him, leading to a realization that she might be another intelligent titan. Reiner, John, and Armin conclude that the female titan is after Eren, who they discover is in the center group, prompting their desperate efforts to thwart her advances. She eludes their attacks and continues towards the center group. Armin, Reiner, and John find themselves stranded after their encounter with the female titan. They have only one horse left, but their situation improves when Krista arrives with extra horses. Expecting an order to withdraw, they are surprised to learn that the operation is continuing in a different direction. Meanwhile, news of the female titan's destruction on the right flank reaches the center group as it wreaks havoc with the formation. The formation soon reaches the forest of giant trees, with only the center row entering while the other guard against titans. Eren becomes suspicious when his squad is unsure of Erwin's orders and Levi's actions. As the female titan pursues them, the squad anxiously awaits Levi's command to attack. Instead, Levi instructs his team to cover their ears and fires his flare gun. Levi fires a noise round and orders the squad to press on. As the female titan claims more lives than the rear guard, Eren wants to fight but respects Levi's decision. Eren recalls his past trouble, transforming into a titan in front of Hanj, Levi, and the squad, and they realized Eren's transformation wasn't just from self-inflicted injuries, but his determination. Trusting each other, the squad cooperates as bait to lure the female titan into an ambush. Levi then joins Eren to potentially unmask the female titan's true identity. With the female titan trapped, Eren and Levi struggle to unveil the female titan's identity as she defends herself by crystallizing her skin. Levi's squad, Armin, John, and others realize Eren's plan, using Eren as bait to reveal the mole who joined the scouts after the wall's fall. They ponder the events in the forest, Levi taunts the female titan, luring nearby titans with her scream. Despite the attempts to stop them, the titans devour her, prompting Erwin to halt the mission. Uncertain if she was eaten, Erwin tells Levi to regroup. The disguised person then attacks Levi's squad, killing Gunther. Erwin confines in Hanj, acknowledging the fallacy of equating all intelligent titans to Eren, as the female titan boasts exceptional abilities surpassing those of a novice. Meanwhile, the enigmatic infiltrator undergoes a transformation, assuming the formidable form of the female titan, and relentlessly pursues Levi's squad. Armin postulates that the infiltrator may be someone who witnessed Eren's titan transformation during the Trost district invasion. Although Eren contemplates transforming into a titan to aid his comrades, his squad advises him to place trust in their capabilities and keep advancing. In a harrowing turn of events, Eld, Aluo, and Petra endeavor to incapacitate the female titan by blinding her and targeting her arms. Regrettably, their efforts prove futile as the female titan rapidly regenerates her injured eye and ruthlessly dispatches the trio. Confronted by the devastating loss of his comrades, a grieving Eren finally makes the agonizing decision 
to transform into a titan. Haunted by the belief that his comrades' deaths might have been averted had he transformed sooner, Eren engages the female titan in a protracted and intense battle. This brutal conflict concludes with the female titan gaining the upper hand, decapitating Eren and consuming his human form. Mikasa's valiant attempts to thwart the female titan's rampage prove unsuccessful. She is later joined by the formidable Levi, who advises her to maintain a safe distance, recognizing the female titan's waning strength. As Mikasa keeps the female titan distracted to rescue Eren, Levi swiftly disables her, though he injured his leg while protecting Mikasa. Mikasa joins Levi, who retrieves Eren from inside the female titan, leaving her wounded against a tree. The scout regiment gathers their fallen comrades' bodies, and Erwin orders them to report the missing ones as missing in action. On their way back to town, they encounter two titans, one of which Mikasa slays. To escape the other titan, Levi reluctantly orders the disposal of some corpses to lighten the wagon. Eren awakens from a past dream back safely behind Walshina, with the townspeople blaming the scout regiment for the mission's failure and the casualties. Two children, however, admired the soldiers for their determination. Due to the expedition's failure, Erwin and his team must attend a capital hearing to decide Eren's custody. Any dreams of her father's training before waking up? In the Stohes district, the military police regiment is ordered to escort the scout regiment's convoy as it enters the capital. Annie's colleagues, Hitch Drace and Marlo Sand, have joined the military police regiment for opposing reasons, one due to its corruption and the other in hopes of reform. After the convoy enters the Stohes district, Armin secretly contacts Annie in the alleyways. Armin asks for her help in assisting Aaron's escape from the capital, revealing that the person in the convoy is John in disguise. Initially declining, Annie agrees when Armin expresses his belief in her goodness. Armin guides Eren, Mikasa, and Annie toward a tunnel, but Annie refuses to enter. Armin then confronts her, suspecting that she is the female titan. He points to evidence like her use of Marco's omnidirectional mobility gear to kill Sonny and Bean and the female titan, sparing him during the 57th expedition. Eren and Armin implore Annie to follow them to prove her innocence, and she laughs before transforming using the spike in her ring. A few days before Eren's escort to the capital, Erwin and Armin reveal a plan to capture Annie, suspected to be the female titan. In the present, Eren, Mikasa, and Armin evade a tunnel collapse while being pursued by Annie in her titan form. Eren attempts to transform but struggles, with Mikasa suspecting his conflicted feelings for Annie are hindering him. Trapped in another tunnel collapse, Mikasa and Armin lead Annie away from Eren. Commander Niall Dock confronts Erwin, seeking an explanation for the chaos. The scout regiment attempts to capture Annie, while Armin and John work to free Eren. Armin reminds Eren of the need for sacrifice to effect change, and as Eren recalls his hatred for the smiling titan that killed his mother, he finally transforms into a titan. Eren charges at Annie, pummeling her into a cathedral in a fit of rage and facing off. Inside the cathedral, worshippers are crushed, leaving the surviving priest in awe. Eren and Annie engage in a destructive battle in their titan forms, causing civilian casualties. Erwin takes responsibility and is arrested by Nile, who orders the military police to evacuate civilians. Eren overpowers Annie, and Mikasa prevents her escape by severing her fingers. Eren is about to consume Annie, but Levi intervenes, insisting on her capture for interrogation. Annie cries, encases herself in crystal, and later emerges in human form. Afterwards, Erwin clarifies his plan at a government inquiry and remains determined to find intelligent titans for a counterattack. Eren continues with the scout regiment, while Annie, comatose with her crystal, is placed under their custody. In the epilogue, a piece of wall Sheena crumbles, revealing a hidden titan's face. Hanjo's team uncovers a titan encased within the wall, leading to an intense encounter with Pastor Nick. He insists on covering it with sunlight, but refuses to share the reason. Hanj suspects more wall titans hidden within the walls. Meanwhile, Erwin Smith learns of Wall Rose's breach and the titan threat inside. Twelve hours earlier, titans approach the 104th Cadet's outpost. 
Zacharias instructs the soldiers and cadets to spread the alarm. He sacrifices himself to delay the Titans, but is captured by the Beast Titan, a speaking, ape-like creature. Mish loses his omnidirectional mobility gear and is left for the other Titans to consume. Armin and Hange realize that wall Titans within the walls are crucial to the structure. The scout regiment heads to Wall Rose to handle the invading Titans, taking Pastor Nick for questioning. In Dopper, Sasha discovers the village deserted, except for a gruesome Titan attack on a woman. She rescues a traumatized girl and helps defeat the Titan when villagers return. In Ragako, Connie finds his village decimated. Strangely, a feeble Titan rests on its back within the house, far from the walls. Connie is hopeful about his family's safety due to the lack of destruction, but his optimism is shattered when he hears a Titan in his house speaking to him. The scouts regroup with no signs of wall breaches and rest at Castle Utgard. Aaron learns about sealing the wall from Annie's crystal and the importance of Krista in finding answers. Meanwhile, the Beast Titan leads a Titan attack on Castle Utgard, prompting Nanaba, Hinning, Lin, and Gelgar to protect the 104th Cadets. Just before the Titan attack on Castle Utgard, the 104th Cadets are resting while senior soldiers keep watch. Connie mentions a Titan resembling his mother, sparking suspicion. Then, Titans attack! Senior soldiers battle outside, while the cadets fend off smaller Titans within the castle. Reiner gets injured. After repelling the first Titans, the Beast Titan hurls Wall Rose debris, killing their horses. Another Titan wave arrives, overwhelming the seniors. Encircled and unarmed, the 104th cadets face danger. Ymir jumps from the tower and surprisingly transforms into a Titan keeping her promise to Krista. In the past, Krista and Ymir tried to save Daz during winter training, but got caught in a blizzard. Ymir accused Krista of having a death wish. She also knew Krista's true identity as an illegitimate daughter of a nobleman's mistress who was forced to change her name and join the army. Ymir made Krista promise to live her life if she revealed her real name. In the present, Ymir transforms into an agile, intelligent titan as she fights the other titans, she begins to tell Krista to try and collapse the tower to crush those that she was fighting. The scout regiment arrives in time to save the 104th cadets as Ymir loses consciousness. The cadets discover Ymir's secret. She's an intelligent titan. Krista then reveals her true name to them all. Historia Reese. The scouts prepare to transport Ymir to Trost for treatment. Hannes arrives, revealing that the walls remain unbreached. Aaron confronts Reiner and Barclophagus, who admit their Titan identities and suggest Aaron join them to prevent humanity's destruction. Earlier, the scouts linked Annie, Reiner, and Barclophagus, suspecting that they helped the Titans locate Aaron. They decided to keep a close watch on them. In the present, Reiner and Barclophagus become Titans. Mikasa intervenes, but Reiner, now as the armor Titan, takes Aaron, and Barclophagus, the colossal Titan, captures Ymir. Eren then transforms to fight the Armored Titan. During the intense battle, the Colossal Titan devours Ymir and another scout. The scouts, led by Hanj, attempt to attack but are hindered by the Colossal Titan's scorching steam. The Armored Titan has the upper hand against Eren in hand-to-hand, -hand, despite Mikasa's help. But Eren begins to use some hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques that he learned from Annie, causing significant damage to the Armored Titan. Eren heeds Armin's plea to retreat to the wall, and as the Armored Titan charges, Aaron uses grappling techniques from Hodge to regain the upper hand. He comes close to beheading the Armor Titan and extracting Reiner, but the Armor Titan's roar summons the falling Colossal Titan, changing the entire situation of the battle. The Colossal Titan crashes and releases steam. The Armor Titan frees Aaron, and Barclophagus escapes with Ymir. Five hours later in Trost, the military gets an update on the battle. Mikasa dreams of her past, and learns Aaron and Ymir are captured, which then prompts Hannes to remind them all of Aaron's determination. Then, Erwin arrives with reinforcements, and Hodge speculates that Reiner and Barclophagus may head to the forest of giant trees outside Wall Maria. Aaron and Ymir awaken in the forest, and the scouts begin a rescue mission. Erwin leads the scouts away from Wall Rose, and Hanj sends Moblet to investigate the immobilized Titan in Raga Ko. In the forest of giant trees, Eren and Ymir are surrounded by Titans and left without omnidirectional mobility gear by Reiner and Barclophagus, 
who are waiting for Nightfall to then move. Aaron and Ymir can't escape until they fully regenerate, so Reiner talks about his duties as both a soldier and a warrior, which leads to confusion between his personas. Ymir then worries about the Beast Titan and suggests it might be the true enemy. Reiner manipulates the situation, exploiting Ymir's concern for Historia and causing tension between her and Eren. Then, the arrival of the scouts interrupts their conversation. Moblet reaches Ragako and identifies Connie's mother as the immobilized Titan, drawing a connection from a portrait of Connie's parents. In the forest of giant trees, Ymir insists Reiner and Barclophagus must take Historia with them. Ymir's flashback reveals her history as a child worshipped by a cult, then her subsequent transformation into a pure Titan and her return to human form after consuming Marcel. Her empathy for Historia is rooted in embracing her true identity. In the present, Ymir convinces Reiner and Barclophagus to let her transform into her Titan form and carry Historia. The scouts enter the forest, and Ymir swallows Historia before rejoining Reiner and Barclophagus. Reiner then becomes the Armored Titan, while Barclophagus, Aaron, and Ymir ride on its shoulders as they escape at the forest's edge pursued by the scouts. Ymir disgorges Historia and reverts from her Titan form, explaining her actions to her. The scouts close in on the armor Titan, but it blocks Mikasa from saving Eren. Then the 104th cadets try to reason with Barclophagus, but he insists on their mission despite their past camaraderie. Erwin decides to become bait to distract Titans charging the scouts, and they are ordered to scatter and fight the Titans. The armor Titan defends itself against the attacking Titans, releasing Eren and Barclophagus. Despite the injuries, the team rescues Eren. Connie and Sasha doubt Ymir's motives, though, and the armor Titan hinders the scouts by throwing Titans at them. Eren and Mikasa then face the smiling Titan, which once devoured their mother, Carla Jaeger. Surrounded by Titans thrown by the armor Titan, the scouts face dire straits. Hannes sacrifices himself to protect Eren and Mikasa from the smiling Titan, but Eren is unable to transform. But he is uplifted by Mikasa's words of devotion and resolves to defend her. When he punches the smiling titan and screams, prompting surrounding titans to devour it. Ymir realizes Reiner and Barclophagus are after Eren due to his ability to control other titans known as the Coordinates. The scouts escape after Eren leads the titans to the Armor Titan. Ymir then decides to abandon Historia to save the Armor Titan and Barclophagus. A week later, Hanj and Connie report to Erwin, Levi, and Dot Pixis that the Titans within Wall Rose were Ragako's citizens. Eren then vows to use his newfound power to aid humanity, and Erwin is resolute in uncovering the truth behind the Titans. On Wall Maria, the Beast Titan gazes out, and a mysterious bespectacled man emerges, uttering the words, Not just yet. The newly reformed Squad Levi, now comprising Aaron and friends, conducts Titan experiments in a remote cottage. Troubling news arrives with the murder of Pastor Nick and Trost's district barracks, seemingly at the hands of the military police's first interior squad. Levi suspects a government conspiracy to destroy the Survey Corps and protect Titan secrets. They receive a message from the arrested Erwin, prompting a return to Trost District. Hodge departs with Moblet to assist Erwin. The scouts secretly return to Trost, using John and Armin as decoys. They get kidnapped, but are swiftly rescued by Mikasa and others. Meanwhile, Levi shadows Eren and Historia's transport with Nifa and two soldiers. Unexpectedly though, Kenny the Ripper and his gang appear, wielding slug guns. They kill Nefa's team, setting the stage for a confrontation with Levi. Kenny, working for the first interior squad, hunts Levi and confronts him in a tavern, but Levi manages to escape after a confrontation. Meanwhile, Mikasa and the scouts defend Historia and Eren's wagon, and they're forced to kill human foes for the first time, leaving them emotionally shaken. After their clash with Kenny's group, Armin and the others are traumatized by the act of killing other humans. They question Demo Reeves, who had been coerced by the military police. In exchange for Reeves' cooperation, though, Levi offers to protect Trost's people. Haunch approaches Erwin for help, pointing out the danger Eren faces. With Reeves' assistance, 
The scouts capture Interior Squad members Dej, Sonus, and Ralph, who reveal that Historia is the true heir to the throne. They suspect she's held captive by her father, Rod Rees. Later, Kenny kills Reeves, unaware that Reeves' son, Flegel, witnesses the murder. Historia shares her past with the scouts. In the present, Erwin discusses his plan for a peaceful coup to overthrow the corrupt royal government and reclaim Wal Maria. Pixis is convinced when Erwin reveals Sonus's confession about the king being a fraud. Because of this, the scouts intend to make Historia the new queen. Erwin also shares that his father was killed after revealing the true motives behind the conflicts within the walls protecting the wealth of the elite, not humanity. So to protect his comrades, Erwin surrenders to the military police. Outside the city, Squad Levi splits up, preparing for their mission to rescue Historia and Eren while being pursued by the military police. Squad Levi apprehends two pursuing soldiers, Marlo and Hitch, who were Annie's friends in the military police. Upon learning that the scouts are being framed and that Annie was the female titan, Marlo and Hitch decide to assist. They reveal a lightly guarded outpost to squad Levi. After subduing the soldiers at the outpost, Levi interrogates the interior police officer to find Aaron in Historia's location. Meanwhile, Hodge rescues Flegel from the military police, who aim to silence him about his father's death at the hands of the interior police. With Hange and Moblet's aid, Flegel lures the military police to Stohes District, where he exposes their involvement in his father's death and the government's plot to frame the scouts. The truth comes out in front of the district's residents and reporters before the military police is apprehended. The people now see through the government's deceit, and Hange initiates the next phase of their plan. Elsewhere, Erwin faces execution before the king. He warns Niall to choose a side as Pixis commences the coup. Erwin pleads his case for reclaiming Wal Maria and preventing a resource-based civil war at his trial, but he's sentenced to death. As this happens, news of a titan breach in Walrose arrives. The Royal Council's decision to close the gates, sacrificing Walrose refugees, disgusts Niall, who refuses to comply. Chancellor Zackley reveals the breach news as a rouge, exposing the council's self-interest and callousness. Pixis announces the military will take control and publish this truth. The scouts learn of these events, and Hodge discusses the mysterious deaths in Rod Reese's family. In a crystalline cavern, Historia approaches a chained Aaron. Historia reassures Aaron about her father's intentions, despite his actions against the scouts and Pastor Nick's death. Rod instructs Historia to touch Aaron, unearthing Aaron's shocking memories. He transformed into a titan, devouring his father Grisha, and obtained the basement key. This revelation also stirs Historia's memories, revealing her half-sister, Frida, who possessed the founding titan power and was devoured by Grisha. Kenny arrives, updates him on the coup, and prepares to defend the cavern below the Reese Chapel. In the capital, Pixis informs Erwin that the Reese family can alter memories, and Erwin assembles a rescue force. As Kenny prepares his defense, he reflects on the Ackermans' exile and their immunity to the Reese memory manipulation. Meanwhile, Squad Levi discovers a hidden trap door in the chapel floor, ready to descend and save Aaron. Squad Levi charges into the cavern, clashing with Kenny and his anti-personal control squad, eventually pushing them to their last defensive position. Meanwhile, Rod enlightens Astoria about the origins of the cavern and city walls. Constructed a century ago by their ancestor, this ancestor harnessed the Founding Titan's power to erase the memories of all citizens, sparing only specific bloodlines. Generations later, Frida inherited the Founding Titan and the Lost Memories. Rod further explains that Frida's essence resides within the Founding Titan, making Historia realize that she must transform into a Titan, consume Eren, and claim the Founding Titan's power to reconnect with her sister. Kinney, upon hearing that only Reese Bloodline members can wield the Founding Titan's power, confronts Rod in anger. He decides to wound Eren, compelling Historia to battle Eren for power. As Historia prepares to inject herself with a Titan serum, she notices Eren's inner turmoil. Recalling Ymir's wish for her to lead a life filled with pride, Historia comprehends Rod's true motives, aimed at restoring his family's dominance and maintaining the status quo, just as it happened with Frida and her predecessors. With fury, Historia refuses to proceed, shattering the syringe and subduing her father by breaking his back. She then seizes the keys to release Eren. In a desperate move, 
Rod consumes some of the serum from the shattered syringe on the ground, triggering his transformation into an enormous titan. Squad Levi penetrates the cavern, working together with Astoria to liberate Eren. Their efforts take a dire turn when the colossal eh, titan Rod Reese causes the cavern to collapse. Amidst the chaos, falling debris endangers Kenny and his squad. Quick thinking, Eren consumes a serum that enables his titan form to harden, propping up the ceiling and averting catastrophe, ensuring their safety. They retrieve Eren from his crystallized titan shell and head back towards Orvid District at Walshina. In the meantime, Rod's towering titan inches closer to Walshina, radiating scorching heat that turns everything in its path to ashes. With no viable approach to tackle the situation, consensus emerges that Rod must be eliminated. Upon returning to Orva District, Levi conveys to Historia that as she possesses royal blood, she must ascend the throne to facilitate the transition from the old regime. Though hesitant, Historia agrees with the condition that she actively participates in the battle against Rod's Titan. Surprisingly, Erwin opts not to evacuate the Orvid citizens as Rod's Titan draws near. Erwin stands by his decision not to evacuate Orvid District, leveraging the Titan's attraction to population density as a tactical advantage. Initially, their plan appears successful as Rod's Titan is lured close to the wall for a trap. Yet, cannon attacks prove ineffective and Rod's Titan eventually climbs over the wall's edge. The scouts then take advantage. Explosive-laden carts target the Titan's supporting arms, causing it to crash forward onto the wall. Seizing the moment, Eren transforms into his Titan form and detonates the Titan's nape from within, while scouts clean up the debris with their 3D maneuver gear. Historia successfully destroys the primary fragments holding Rod, ending her father's Titan existence. She safely lands in a cushioned wagon amid astonished onlookers, proclaiming her rightful role to the crowd. At the Reese estate, Kenny reflects on his past before Levi finds him severely injured. In his final moments, Kenny Ackerman reflects on his life, remembering his capture by Uri Reese in his Titan form and the subsequent pledge of loyalty to the Reese family. He shares with Levi his upbringing of Cutchell's son, teaching him the ways of a killer and becoming the leader of the secretive anti-personnel control squad. He contemplates whether the Reese family's power could afford him the luxury of compassion. Levi urges Kenny to reveal his knowledge about the Titans and their family. And in his dying breath, Kenny discloses his relationship with Levi as his uncle and passes him a package containing the stolen Titan serum. Meanwhile, Historia is crowned queen in the capital, with Levi offering his congratulations. He expresses his gratitude to the scouts for their role in eliminating the Rod Reese Titan. On another front, the Peace Titan, Reiner, and Barclophagus prioritize their mission to locate the coordinate over their desire to rescue Annie Leonhardt. Two months following Historia's coronation, the military successfully eradicates all remnants of the previous regime and secures a substantial supply of crystals from the Reese estate. Simultaneously, Eren hones his titan hardening ability, while Hanj develops a new weapon, designed to dispatch titans with ease and without human casualties. During this time, Eren becomes aware that Keith Shattis, the former training corps member, is the individual who recognizes his father, Grisha, and his memories. The scouts pay a visit to Keith to learn more about their connection. Keith recounts his encounter with Grisha nearly two decades ago outside Walmaria. Grisha, suffering from amnesia, integrated into life within the walls, offering his services as a doctor and eventually marrying Carla. Tragically, after Carla's death during the fall of Shinganshina, Grisha took Eren into the forest and Keith discovered the young boy alone with a key around his neck. Grisha had praised Keith as special, leading to his resignation as commander of the Survey Corps, burdened by the guilt of losing his comrades. After the revelation, Eren comes to terms with being the son of a remarkable man, and the scouts begin preparation for the mission to reclaim Wall Maria. Hanj faces difficulty analyzing the volatile Titan serum formula, prompting Erwin to entrust it to Levi for potential Titan transformation use. Erwin then discloses their plans to reclaiming Wall Maria and reveals a confidential operation to explore the Jaeger's family basement. After the other lieutenants depart, Levi attempts to persuade Erwin to remain behind while Hanj leads the scouts. But Erwin insists on being at the helm, 
The night prior to their mission, the scouts enjoy a rare meat dinner, leading to tense moments and a quarrel over portions. Aaron further stirs emotions by provoking a clash with John. Later, Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin reminisce about their shared past and contemplate their aspirations for a future beyond the walls. On the day of the expedition to recapture Wall Maria, the residents of Trost gather to cheer on the scouts and extend their well wishes. Meanwhile, Barclophagus and Reiner keep watch over Wall Maria. In a mid credit scene, upon reaching Shinganshina District, they find it eerily deserted. Eren utilizes his titan's hardening ability to steal the breach in the outer wall, fortifying their position. Before sailing the inner wall breach, Armin stumbles upon a recently abandoned campsite and is tasked with investigating potential ambushes. Armin then delegates the duty of inspecting the walls for concealed hollows to some of the corpse members. In a sudden turn of events, Reiner emerges from a camouflaged wall cavity, instantly transforming into the formidable armor Titan. The core is swiftly encircled by Titans, and the Beast Titan further blocks their escape route by hurling a massive boulder, trapping their horses within Shinganshina and leaving them with no means of retreat. Reiner, donning the armor Titan, initiates his ascent up the wall toward the Survey Corps. Simultaneously, the Beast Titan signals a horde of two to three meter Titans within Wall Maria to charge the wall, targeting the horses with the aim of cutting off the corpse's escape route. Recognizing the imminent threat to the horses, three squads are dispatched to safeguard them, while Levi and Hanj squad prepare to confront the armor titan by deploying their thunder spears. Erwin initially holds back Levi and Armin, focusing their attention on the beast titan. On the wall summit, the armor titan comes face to face with Erwin, poised for a confrontation. Unexpectedly, Eren shifts into his titan form and makes a strategic retreat. The Armor Titan, now determined to pursue Eren, abandons his mission of attacking the horses. This prompts a high-stakes clash of strength and strategy between Eren and the Armor Titan. Eren's extensive training and hardening his hands proves effective, allowing him to momentarily weaken his armored adversary. Hanj and her squad capitalize on this vulnerability by launching thunder spears aimed at the nape of the Armor Titan's neck. Their initial assault inflicts substantial damage on the Titan, prompting them to unleash a relentless barrage of spears in a final bid to vanquish the Armor Titan and its pilot, Reiner. In his concealed location, Barclophagus reflects on a painful memory from the Battle of Trost. This memory resurfaces, reminding him of the distressing decision he, Reiner, and Annie had to make when they left Marco to the mercy of the Titans. It was Marco's unfortunate fate after he overheard the strategy to thwart Eren from sealing the hole in the wall. Barclophagus also recollects an earlier meeting with Reiner in Shinganshina, during which their commitment to their mission was called into question. Back in the present, the Armor Titan signals the Beast Titan with a resounding roar. This cue prompts the Beast Titan to hurl a barrel containing Barclophagus into Shinganshina. Despite seeing Reiner's incapacitation, Barclophagus refrains from an immediate transformation. Instead, he chooses to confront the scouts directly. Armin, in an attempt to negotiate, reaches out to him, but Barclophagus is resolute and determined to eliminate everyone. He propels himself high into the sky, culminating in a transformation into the Colossal Titan. The ensuing spectacle is a colossal explosion, leaving the fate of Hanj and her group uncertain. Amidst this chaos, Armin grapples with a decision. He faces the daunting choice of whether to launch an offensive or orchestrate a retreat while the Colossal Titan inexorably advances towards the inner wall. Barclophagus Colossal Titan transforms Shinganshina into a fiery inferno, leaving Armin paralyzed by indecision. He defers command to John as they retreat to the river for cover. Outside the wall, the Beast Titan hurls stones at the scouts guarding the horses, causing casualties and destroying buildings. Levi regroups with Erwin at the wall's base. Meanwhile, Eren's attempt to halt the Colossal Titan's advance fails, and he's knocked out after being kicked onto the wall. John orders Armin's team to attack using the Thunder Spears, but the Colossal Titan counters with a massive steam release. The situation seems dire until Erwin proposes a counterattack. He leads the remaining recruits in a diversion, sacrificing themselves to give Levi a chance to kill the Beast Titan. Acknowledging the likelihood of his own death without ever uncovering the basement secrets. 
Erwin delivers an inspiring speech, convincing the recruits that it's better to die fighting than to be killed cowering from the airborne boulders. They follow him into a charge towards the Beast Titan, braving a storm of rocks. Erwin sustains fatal injuries as he leads the charge against the Beast Titan. Meanwhile, Levi engages the Beast Titan, eliminating the Titans on its right flank. Levi successfully incapacitates the Beast Titan and prepares to extract the blonde man from it. His intentions is to turn one of the injured recruits into a Titan to devour the War Chief. However, the Cart Titan intervenes, snatching the man and escaping. The man acknowledges that he underestimated Levi before ordering the remaining Titans to attack him. Simultaneously, the group faces the immobile Colossal Titan, using the moment when it releases steam to make their move. Armin devises a plan to take down the Armor Titan while the others engage it in battle. Reiner, the Armor Titan, has lost recent memories due to the previous attack. With their resources running low, the group uses their remaining Thunder Spears to weaken the Armor Titan's jaw hinges, allowing Mikasa to use her Thunder Spear to free Reiner from his Titan form. Amidst the chaos, Armin bravely challenges the Colossal Titan by hooking his ODM gear onto the monster's tooth. Barclophagus responds by burning Armin alive with steam, unaware that Armin's sacrifice is a distraction. Eren uses the opportunity to harden his titan form and then, in human form, covertly moves into position to extract Barclophagus from the colossal titan. In the aftermath, Eren retrieves the limbless Barclophagus and finds Armin severely burnt. He reflects on Armin's true courage. Eren stands alone besides the burned body of Armin and the unconscious Barclophagus. His solitude is disrupted by the arrival of the cart titan carrying the blonde man. The man questions Eren's beliefs, alleging that his father had lied to him. He departs when Levi arrives, still in pursuit, and promises to return to save Eren. Meanwhile, Hanj acquires a letter from Ymir, which Reiner had possessed. Initially, Hodge attempts to kill Reiner, but is persuaded by John to have Mikasa retrieve the Titan Serum from Levi. Their plan is to transfer the Armor Titan's power to one of their own. The Cart Titan intervenes and rescues Reiner. Mikasa discovers that Armin, though severely injured, is still alive, while Levi prepares to administer the serum. In the midst of this, Flock Forster, the sole surviving recruit from the suicide mission, arrives with the gravely wounded Erwin. Levi, contemplating his decision, leans toward administering the serum to Erwin instead. This leads to Eren and Mikasa openly challenging Levi's choice. Mikasa confronts Levi physically, but Hanj intervenes. After a period of tension and reflection, Levi instructs everyone to leave. He repairs to administer the serum to Erwin, but in a delirious state. Levi recalls his conversation with Erwin before the suicide mission and ultimately decides to let Erwin find peace. He opts to administer the serum to Armin instead. As Erwin succumbs to his injuries, Armin becomes a mindless titan and consumes Barclophagus. Levi and Hanj mourn Erwin's passing while the rest of the squad experiences a heartfelt moment as Armin emerges healed from his titan form. Armin experiences a nightmare featuring a sorrowful colossal titan and wakes with no recollection of events following Barclophagus' transformation. The remaining nine Survey Corps members gather around him to provide an explanation. Armin grapples with Levi's choice to save him over Erwin. Hodge, Levi, Eren, and Mikasa then return to Shinganshina to explore the basement of Eren's home. Inside, they discover three well-preserved books hidden within a desk drawer. One book contains a photograph of Grisha, a woman, and an infant, none of whom are Carla or Eren. Grisha's inscription on the back reveals that the photograph was created using technology from a land beyond the walls where people live in luxury. The Survey Corps members return to the city and Nile Doc privately shares with the council that Erwin once pondered the possibility of humans residing beyond the walls. In a post credit scene, Eren commences reading Grisha's book, which begins with Grisha reminiscing about his youth. He and his sister, Faye Yeager, lived in a city beyond Mitris and Walmaria. In their childhood, they watched an airship soaring overhead. Despite their mother's warnings, Grisha took Faye beyond the walls of their district to witness the airship's landing. While Eren and Mikasa were confined in the stockade following their actions after the battle of Shinganshina, Eren experiences a vivid dream that delves into the lives of his father, Grisha. The dream begins with Grisha and his younger sister, Faye, sneaking outside the Liberio internment zone for Eldians to watch Zeppelins. However, their excursion is cut short when they are apprehended by two public safety soldiers. 
To shield his parents from further trouble, Grisha willingly accepts a beating from Kruger, the superior officer, while Gross offers to escort Faye back home. Tragically, Faye's lifeless body is discovered the following day, leaving Grisha devastated and aware of Gross's role in her murder. Gross deceitfully informs Faye's parents that he returned her safely to the Liberio internment zone, and Faye's father, cognizant of the prevailing prejudices against their people, reluctantly accepts his lie. As Grisha matures, he becomes a member of the Eldian Restoration Movement after learning the truth about Faye's death from a fellow Eldian named Grease. The movement receives clandestine support from an informant known as Owl. Grisha gains an understanding of Eldian's genuine history and eventually marries Dinah Fritz, the last known Eldian with royal blood on the mainland. The couple has a son named Zeke who appears alongside them in a photograph. When Marley initiates the warrior program to maintain its competitive edge over rival nations and securing natural resources, Grisha's attempt to raise Zeke as an infiltrator backfires. Zeke becomes loyal to Marley and exposes the restorationists to the authorities, including his own parents. Subsequently, Grisha and his fellow restorationists are transported by boat to the perimeter wall of Paradise Island, where they are to be turned into mindless pure titans through titan spinal fluid injection. On the brink of exile, Grisha recognizes Kruger and Gross among the Marleyan squad escorting them. Gross, the malefactor behind Faye's death, kicks Grice off the wall and prepares to dispose of Grisha similarly. However, a sudden intervention by Kruger unfolds as he pushes Gross over the wall, sacrificing him to a titan. Kruger unveils his dual identity as both the Owl and a Titan Shifter and transforms into the Attack Titan, swiftly annihilating the remaining public safety soldiers. Armin diligently transcribes Aaron's account of Grisha's encounter with the enigmatic Owl, who divulged his full name as Aaron Kruger. Kruger candidly confesses the complexity of his role, explaining that he reluctantly engaged in the persecution of his fellow Eldians to protect his covert mission of Eldia's restoration. Kruger proceeds to disclose a series of crucial revelations to Grisha, emphasizing that those who wield the Titan power are cursed with a mere 13 years of existence. He elucidates the two primary avenues of Titan power secession, the unique abilities of the Coordinate, and the urgent need to obtain the founding Titan from the royal family within Paradise Island. Moreover, Kruger urges Grisha to build a new family as part of this cover. The harrowing scene unfolds as Kruger administers the Titan Serum to Grisha, injecting him with the knowledge of the Coordinate and even mentioning the names of Armin and Mikasa, which perplexes Grisha. In the present day, Aaron and Mikasa are granted their freedom from the stockade to partake in a government conference. Historia, moved by Ymir's farewell letter and the memories it holds, also attends. The evidence presented before the council weighs heavily on them, and Hanj laments that their adversaries now encompass not only titans, but also other human factions. Hanj highlights Eren's ability to command pure titans, raising questions about his capacity to do so despite his lack of royal bloodline. Eren harbors a hidden truth. His unique ability was activated when he came into physical contact with Dinah's pure titan form, fearing the military's potential actions towards Historia, Aaron keeps this revelation to himself. During a pivotal meeting within the Paradis government, Historia takes the bold step of advocating for the truth to be unveiled after a century of concealed secrets regarding the Titans. She contends that the Titans' sudden breach of the walls marked the inception of a premeditated invasion orchestrated by the nation of Marley. This revelation elicits a myriad of reactions from the populace, evoking a mixture of emotions. At a solemn ceremony held to honor the fallen comrades, Hitch approaches this surviving members of the scout regiment. Flock, recognizing Marlowe's heroism, offers words of admiration for his noble sacrifice. Amidst the solemnness, Flock dares to address a difficult and contentious question, the controversial choice of administering the Titan Serum to Armin instead of Erwin. As Astoria bestows medals upon the nine survivors, Eren's touch on her hand leads to an unexpected surge of memories. These memories unveil a deep-rooted connection through Titan blood, further intensifying the mysteries of their existence. Fast forward one year following the catastrophic Trost District attack, the Titans lurking within Wal Maria have been vanquished. The inhabitants return to their homelands, embarking on the arduous journey of rebuilding and agricultural endeavors. Six years after the fall of Wal Maria, the indomitable Scout Corps, 
include the nine survivors, resume their daring expedition beyond the walls. During one of the missions, they encounter an unusual immobile titan whose small limbs hint at their proximity to the perimeter wall where Marley transforms Eldians into titans. As they venture further, the scout corps finally reach the wall where Grisha underwent his transformation into a titan. Here, they are met with a breathtaking sight, a vast, shimmering ocean stretching before their very eyes. Overwhelmed by the sheer beauty of this newfound discovery, they revel in the ocean's waters. However, Aaron's contemplative gaze hints at a deeper realization. While they have found the ocean, their ultimate quest for freedom remains elusive. Aaron gazes into the horizon and ponders a chilling question. If they can eliminate all their adversaries across the sea, will true freedom finally be within their grasp? Our story begins years after the events of Season 3, with the child soldiers of Marley on the battlefield of Fort Slava. The Middle East has declared war on Marley, and thus they have sent in a combination of Eldian soldiers, child soldiers, and a new flock of warrior candidates. The first, Falco Greece, the brother of Colt Greece and nephew of Eldian Restorationist, just Greece. Despite being a warrior candidate in line to inherit the Beast Titan, he doesn't show the same hatred for his fellow people people, it tends to think with logic and reasoning rather than racism and indoctrination. Due to this, he's generally a very kind-hearted young boy and has a crush on one Gabby Braun. She, on the other hand, is in many ways the opposite of Falco, as Gabby, who is set to inherit the armor titan from Reiner Braun, is uh, drinking the Kool-Aid of Marley's indoctrination and believes the only good Eldian is a dead one. Thus, gives into her hatred for her fellow man and woman while simultaneously trying to prove they're much more than that. Needless to say, Gabby is a very complex and morally gray character. And along with them is their friends Udo and Sophia. They're their goal is to take Fort Slava, and to start Gabby Braun takes out an armored train using anti-vehicle grenades crafted from multiple fragmentation grenades strapped together. Achieving her goal, this allows the Cart Titan, Peak Finger, and the Jaw Titan, Porco Galliard, to move forward with their attack on Fort Slava. During this, it's revealed Marley has started the use of Zeppelins, which fly over the fort with their ace in the hole, weaponized Titans. These Eldians are injected with Zeke Jaeger's spinal fluid that he can turn into pure titans by screaming and dropped mid-air from the zeppelins to destroy the fort and cause a distraction. This then allows Reiner's armor titan to break into Fort Slava to take care of the anti-titan weaponry being used against them. This culminates in Zeke transforming into the beast titan and destroying the Middle East's navy fleet. This puts an end to the four-year war between the two sides, but brings up a new issue. Technology is developing at such a rapid pace that anti-titan weaponry is becoming an issue. After the battle at Fort Slava, there is a meeting between Zeke and the other top brass in Marley's government and military to discuss their next moves. Zeke promises them that with his last year alive that he will retake the founding Titan, something they need to do now with the advent of anti-Titan weaponry proving a serious threat to their future. Though over the last three years, all ships sent to Paradise Island have yet to return, as they have been taken along with their soldiers by the Survey Corps. Even so, with Paradise controlling two of the nine titans, they are forced to act on this issue, so they go forward with Zeke's plan. While they continue to act out their plan, we focus back on the soldiers and warrior candidates headed back to their internment zones in Marley. Gabby is being praised for what she did by taking out the armored titan, and while that happens, Falco confines in Ryder that he doesn't want Gabby to become a titan and be forced to fight terrible wars and be used as a weapon. Reiner, in turn, encourages Falco to try his hardest to become the armor titan in her place. As they arrive back home and reunite with their families, Gabby tells her stories of war, which are largely positive, while Reiner's suggests his time on Paradise Island was more of a nightmare, prompting horror in his face and other listeners. The next day, Marley's next plan of attack is decided. They will use the Tiber family, a family full of prominent social figures, elite royalty, and the home of the Warhammer Titan to hold a gathering at the Liberio Festival to announce war on Paradise Island 
and the survey. We are then treated to Reiner's past as a child, where he tried his hardest to become a warrior candidate to become an honorary Marleyan, though it wasn't enough, as people still treated him poorly. Eventually, he became the armor titan, though he did so at the cost of Porco Galliard, who would later become the jaw titan, as he originally aimed for Reiner's position. McGaff, on their first mission as titan warriors, are sent to flush out and reclaim the founding titan from Paradise Island. Reiner is joined by Annie Leonhardt, the female titan, Bertolt Hoover, the colossal titan, and Marcel Galliard, the jaw titan. During the mission, a freak accident would occur where Marcel would be eaten by a dwelling pure titan who would turn out to actually be Ymir. Annie would then suggest that they turn back and return to Marley, but Reiner would take failure as no option, and it forces them to push forward with the mission now down one person. They would eventually fail this mission and decide on Reiner's orders to infiltrate Marley as Survey Corps members as a way to flush out the Founding Titan. After recalling his past, Reiner makes an attempt at suicide, but stops when he realizes Falco is outside the window and decides from there to dedicate the rest of his life to give back to Falco and the other warrior candidates. Falco is then revealed to be going to a meeting with a former Eldian soldier who is faking amnesia to not be sent home. In reality, this is Aaron Yeager, infiltrating Marley under the guise of a former Eldian soldier named Kruger, whose name is taken from the very man who saved Grisha Yeager and the former Attack Titan, which Aaron gets his namesake from. Aaron Yeager, under the name of Kruger, asks Falco to deliver a letter outside the internment zone. This leads to a meeting between Aaron's grandfather, Mr. Yeager, and Aaron himself to put an end to Falco being used by Kruger. It's revealed that Mr. Yeager himself has fallen on bad mental health and is not in the right mind. After this, the commander of the Marleyan military, Commander McGath, meets with the head of the Tiber family, Willie Tiber. They're to discuss an alliance between the Tibers and Marley to hopefully put it into war and create peace between the Eldians and Marley. He then gives a speech on the day of the festival, where everyone is enjoying their time at peace, and for the grand ending to their day, a play put on by Willie Tiber and his family on the history of Marley. While this play occurs, Falco brings Reiner down at a basement to meet with Kruger. Realizing who it is immediately, and being threatened by Aaron, he is forced to sit and talk with him, or else. It's revealed during Willie's play the truth of the Fritz and the Tiber family. They completely made up the story of the hero Helos, who supposedly supposedly freed everyone from the tyranny of King Fritz. In reality, the Fritz and Tiber family made a deal that if peace cannot be kept by Marley, then the Wall Titans would be released in an event simply called the Rumbling. While this is happening, Peek and Porco are led to a room where they are then trapped in a pit hole by undercover Marleyan defector, Yelena. Back on stage, Willie Tiber announces that a war has started, and it's all because of the man who stole the Founding Titans' power, Aaron Yeager. Willie warns that this man is a threat to world peace, and that he is actively going against the deal that King Fritz and the Tibers brokered long ago. Now in the basement, Aaron tells Falco and Reiner how both sides of Paradis and Marley are just the same, and that even he and Reiner are as well the same, but with different upbringings. Reiner, wanting Aaron to not go through with anything drastic, harming Falco, Gabby, or the people close to him, begs forgiveness from Aaron and for him him to instead kill him in return. This simple plea isn't enough, as Aaron has come too far to go back now, and transforms, killing hundreds of innocent people in the complex there below, and Willie Tiber, who at the moment had just declared war against Paradis, and more specifically, Aaron Yeager. But it's revealed in a flashback that Willie Tiber knew all along of his eventual demise, and in advance planned out with McGath that he would become a martyr if necessary for their cause. As Aaron's attack rages on, he eats Willie Tiber, killing many high-ranking generals, some of which who approved Zeke's plan in episode 2, and in the process murders Zofia by flying debris, and then Udo, who is crushed to death by people running for their lives from the Founding Titan. Gabby and Falco, though, are able to recover Udo, and then flee from the scene to a nearby hospital that is overflowing with the injured. There, they are forced to accept Udo's death, which sends Gabby into a rage and looking for 
for vengeance, only to find more Eldian soldiers dying as they are picked off by the invading Survey Corps members, one of which being Sasha Browse. While Aaron continues his attack, Lara Tiber reveals herself to be the Warhammer Titan and transforms, but is quickly attacked by Aaron, only to get the upper hand on him again by using her powerful ability to create blunt objects and weapons using her hardening ability. During the battle, Peek and Porco are rescued by Peek's Cart Titan infantry, which signifies control being handed back over to Marley. Lara Tiber is able to expose Aaron, and when going in for the final blow, Mikasa and the rest of the Survey Corps arrive to bail out Aaron and even out the fight once more, signifying a major shift in favor of Paradis. Using Thunder Spears and their 3DO gear, the sounds of which and the sight of sense horrors down the spines of the Titan Shifters. Though it won't be as simple as point and shoot for the Survey Corps, as Lara's robust exterior proves a match to the Thunder Spears. Instead, it's Aaron who figures out that Lara has simply burrowed herself into the ground, which he then exploits the weakness of, detaching herself from her Titan, which prompts Lara to harden into a crystal form, much like Annie did in Season 1. While this happens, Porco as the Jaw Titan tries to stop Aaron, only to be stopped by the arriving Levi Ackerman, who severs Porco's jaw before he can bite into the Nate. As the Survey Corps uses oppressive force to lay waste to Marley and stop Peek from using her cart Titan at full force, Lara uses her hardening to impale Aaron Yeager and neutralize him. As this happens, Zeke's Beast Titan arrives and starts to attack the invading Paradis forces. Falco then re-emerges as both Reiner and Falco survive the initial transformation due to some quick thinking by Reiner to create a pod-like structure to protect Falco, though Reiner seems to be in some sort of induced coma-like state, and Falco escapes heading back to safety where he runs into Magath and Gabby. While the full-on assault wages against both sides, the rest of the Survey Corps arrive in particular Armin, who transforms into the Colossal Titan, wiping out and killing most life within its nuclear-like transformation, and destroying Marley's navy, which was to converge on their point to provide support for Marley. Levi, in turn, uses this to his advantage to take down the Beast Titan in the commotion, which also leads to Sasha and John being able to take down the Cart Titan though John hesitates when he sees Falco trying to defend a helpless Peak. This leads to the successful rescue of Peak, though she's badly injured. This culminates in Hanj arriving in their getaway Zeppelin that has already picked up Armin. Porco attempts to attack the Zeppelin, but is cut down to size by Aaron and Mikasa. Aaron, then as if he is a nutcracker, uses Porco to shatter Lara and swallow her, gaining the ability of the Warhammer Titan in the process. But it's the cries of Gabby and Falco which awaken Reiner to save Porco from a certain demise. Though Reiner is no match for Aaron as he is extremely weakened and not fully armored, and Aaron as well is nearly out of strength, so he chooses to escape, leaving their fight unfinished. Levi as well ties up Aaron for essentially going AWOL and brings him to the Zeppelin. Gabby though, still in a rage, keeps pursuing the Zeppelin, but is stopped by Falco who tries to talk some sense into her of what's going on. They're creating a cycle of revenge and it won't stop until the senseless killing of people stops. Gabby Gabby refuses his sentiment, and instead continues to chase the Zeppelin, murdering Lobov in the process, which forces Falco's hand to go along with Gabby's plan as they use Lobov's 3DO gear to reach the Zeppelin's bay. There, Gabby quickly takes aim and shoots Sasha in the chest, killing her and obtaining revenge against her. This leads to the ultimate capture of Gabby and Falco by the Survey Corps. They are then brought to another room in the Zeppelin, where they see that Zeke has defected to the side of Paradise taking the side of his brother. They are then informed that Sasha was killed at the hands of Gabby, and that her last words were simply meat, which prompts Aaron to laugh, much in the same way he did in episode 12 of season 2. Helpless to save anyone, John tells Aaron in anger that it was his mission that led to the death of Sasha, his beloved friend. We then learn that just three years prior, Marley sent ships to Paradise Island, but all of them were captured by the Survey Corps. This is where we learn that many within 
Marley's ranks are actually a part of the anti-Marleyan volunteers, two of which are Yelena and Onyan Kampone. Yelena is a staunch supporter of Zeke Jaeger's plan to initiate the rumbling to stop Marley. When Yelena's village was destroyed and taken over by Marley, Yelena found freedom and hope in Zeke. Onyan Kampone is a constituent of Yelena and provides useful technologies to Paradis with their partnership. Three years later, and now after the attack on Marley, we are introduced to Nicolo, a former Marleyan soldier captured three years prior. He mourns the death of Sasha, who he was in love with, and gave him the courage to follow his true passion of being a chef. At the cemetery, he runs into Sasha's family, who offers him to go to a restaurant for dinner, which he accepts. We then see a couple of important things happen. Levi brings Zeke to a camp in the forest, which she will be able to keep an eye on him there. Armin talks to Annie's crystallized form about his troubled mind, and if it was the right decision to do what he did by helping with killing innocents for Aaron and Zeke's plan. And then we see Aaron, who was in a cell much like Gabby and Falco, who were imprisoned after Gabby murdered Sasha. Two years prior, Kiyomi Azumabito went to negotiate with Paradise Island at the recommendation of Zeke. It's revealed here that Mikasa's crest, handed down from her mother, means that she is actually the long-lost descendant of an ancient ruler of Hizuru. Though Kiyomi actually came to help Paradise in return for the Ice Burst Stone, which is used for the 3DO gear. They also suggest something, a test of the rumbling. Doing this would ensure peace for many years to come and as well advance many avenues of technology. The key here though is that Zeke's Beast Titan would be continued to pass down through royal blood every 13 years with Historia being the first in line. Another issue arises though as Eren disagrees with the proposal to sacrifice Historia, though as a year passes, it turns out that the partnership actually bore no fruits as Hizuru and Kiyomi chose greed rather than the original plan as intended. Present, Historia is now pregnant with a farmer's child and hidden away on said farm. As well, John, Connie, and Armin have lost their trust in Aaron as a friend. Confused at his actions, which John and Connie propose that they have someone more trustworthy take over Aaron's role and become the attack titan. Mikasa, on the other hand, still believes that there may be a chance. While that's happening, Gabby and Falco escape their prison cells and make their way into the forests of Paradise Island. They are found by a young orphaned child named Kaya, who brings them to her home, a ranch in the forest run by the Browse family, which takes in children who have no home or family. Agreeing to keep their true identities under wraps, Gabby and Falco are eventually found out by Kaya, who realized pretty quickly they were warriors of Marley. Kaya then shows the village, which was destroyed by Titans years prior, the very same village Sasha saved in season two. Kaya asks Gabby if it's okay for her race of people to keep paying a price that her ancestors committed hundreds of years ago. Falco is able to talk some sense into the argument, acting as sort of the in-between, as they calm down and return to the Ranch. They are then informed that they've been invited to a dinner at a good restaurant within the walls. Seeing as the restaurant is run by a Marley soldier, they think that this is their chance to get back to Marley, so they agree to go. Meanwhile, Kiyomi has finally arrived on the docks to see one of the world's first flying boats, which runs on Ice Burst Stone. In Paradise, Flock and Lewis leak information about Aaron being locked up, which leads to Hanj incarcerating them for their actions. Hanj then pawns ponders the weight of the role that she's in, and how the ones which came before her were able to act under such pressures. In Marley, they figure out that Zeke has sided with Paradis, and thus Reiner proposes to launch a full-scale counterattack now rather than later. In the meantime, Yelena, while being questioned, reveals that she met with Aaron months prior to discuss the terms of their agreement. Onyan Kampone, on the other hand, tells Hanj that Yelena is someone who is loyal to Zeke to the point that she will actually kill people people, and though they were comrades with Yelena, no one, not even he, knew about what Yelena was planning with Zeke. Back in the walls, Armin and Mikasa run into Hitch. Hitch! On their way to meet Zachary, as they plan to ask permission to meet with Aaron. Zachary denies the request, and as they go to leave, Zachary is assassinated using explosives planted by the newly formed Jaegerists. This new group, dedicated to following Aaron and making him the new leader of the military, break him out of prison. Though, at the news of this, Pixies feels he has no options but to give up and join them as they do not know the identity of Jaegerus soldiers or followers, though they will use Zeke's location as a bargaining chip to do so. It's also suggested by Hanj that the Marleyan soldiers could be planned as Yelena and Zeke are suspicious.
expected to have already planned everything out as a way to cover all bases before moving forward. Back in the forest, Zeke tells Levi that four years earlier, Marley created a weapon to allow Zeke's spinal fluid to be synthesized into a gas-like substance. In any form, Zeke's spinal fluid is actually able to essentially paralyze people and put them in a state of limbo, to which he can then scream and turn those affected into pure titans. He did this exact same thing to those in Ragako village as a way to keep his cover going with Marley. As the festivals of the dinner are now underway, Falco and Gabby meet with Nicolo and upon connecting the dots that it was Gabby who killed Sasha. Nicolo takes the bottle of wine he had and inadvertently smashes it over Falco's head. He then knocks Gabby out and brings the two to the Browse family and gives them the opportunity to kill them for their actions. Though, while Kaya will not forgive Gabby for her actions, the rest of the Browse family understand that by killing Gabby, that they would only be creating a cycle of revenge. Though, this is not their biggest issue as Nicolo reveals to Hanj that the wine Falco accidentally consumed contains some of Zeke's spinal fluid, which was also given to many officials within Paradis. The Jaegerists then invade the restaurant, which leads to a meeting between Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa. Aaron reveals to them that while in disbelief, he is still a free person acting under complete freedom. While the conversation continues, he reveals to Armin that he has feelings for Annie, and the reason for this is because every Titan Shifter carries the memories of the previous person to wield that power before. As for Mikasa, he states that her race of the Ackermans were essentially programmed by Eldia to protect what was then the royal family. Because of these two facts, Aaron has hated both both Mikasa and Armin since they were children. After a brief fight, which Eren wins, he takes them all to Shinganshina district. There, he plans to meet with Zeke to enact their plan together. In Shinganshina, Flock and the rest of the Jaegerists take over the military. He then forces the cadets there to beat Shadis, which Shadis <laughs> then tells him to do as a kind of test for his now former cadets. What a badass. While this happens, in the forest, Levi is planning to have Zeke eaten when all of his comrades turn into pure titans by Zeke. Zeke then uses the pure titans to escape the forest, but Levi is in pursuit and eventually catches up to him. This leads to Zeke transforming, though is quickly taken down by Levi once again and captured. Quick work. Good job, Levi. Zeke then wakes up in a wagon with a thunder spear embedded in his body. As a way to torture and punish Zeke, Levi then starts to cut off Zeke's limbs as they grow back, which leads into a flashback to Zeke's childhood. One day, Zeke Zeke met Dr. Saver, who at the time was the current beast type. With Grisha and Dinah already severely mistreating and using Zeke, he found solace with Saver because he came to trust Saver. Zeke told him about his restoration as parents, and at the behest of Saver, Zeke reported his parents, who were then taken to Paradise Island. Later on, he would reveal to Zeke that the founding Titan has a hidden ability that he was able to determine through his research. The founding Titan can manipulate all elements Eldian's bodies, and as well, the secret of how to get around the vow of renouncing war. They both then agree to enact their plan to euthanize all Eldians as a way to stop what is happening to them at the hands of Marley. Years later, he would meet with Eren in Liberio, and there, they would both agree to Zeke's euthanasia plan. Now waking up, Zeke intentionally activates the Thunder Spears, which causes the wagon and him to explode. Due to the explosion, Flock with Hanj goes to investigate the sounds when they come across a pure titan who rips open its stomach to put Zeke inside. In Shinganshina, all of the soldiers who drink Zeke's wine are rounded up by Yelena, while the rest of the Survey Corps members are placed inside of a prison cell. Yelena then comes to tell them of Zeke's plan to euthanize the Eldian race, and then using the rumbling as a way to buy time to have Eren and Zeke meet. While this is happening, Eren confronts Gabby, who he tries to get her to join his side, but rather smooth. Smoothly, Peek comes into the picture and feigns convincing Gabby that the right choice is to defect to the Jaegerists. From there, they are led to the rooftop where Peek and Porco enact their plan of trying to eat Eren by surprise. Sadly, it does not work, though it does not matter as Marley have arrived, ready for a fight above and below as they now know Eren's location.
As the Jaegerists, with Hanj under capture, they discover Levi's seemingly lifeless body and Zeke. Then, a wild pure titan comes from the woods and eats Zeke, which allows him to fully heal from all of his injuries. While this is happening, Hanj uses this as a distraction to escape with the remaining chunks of Levi through the flowing stormy stream. Having no choice but to let them go, Zeke then tells Flock of a mysterious girl who he had visions of and the place she resides resides in called The Paths. Meanwhile, in Shinganshina, Marley arrives with backup and reunites Peek and Gabby with Magath and Colt, which Magath is extremely relieved to see Gabby is okay. Though, Gabby has important information she was able to deduce from Zeke. Their objective is simple. Aaron and Zeke are to make contact. So, now their new plan is to simply stop them from achieving their goal. This leads into a massive battle with Eren taking on both Reiner and Porco. Eren is able to gain the upper hand due to the Warhammer Titan's power until Magath uses an anti-Titan cannon, snipes Eren through the head from a top wall Maria. This allows Porco and Reiner to recover and for Marley to turn the tide against the Jaegerists. This leads into Onyan Kampone releasing the Survey Corps members imprisoned by Yelena and the Jaegerists to help them fight against Marley. He's able to convince them by revealing he had no clue about any euthanasia plan and they are able to slowly piece together that they should help Eren due to him most likely lying to Mikasa and Armin about the Ackerman gene and Armin becoming part Barclophagus. That's an inside joke on the channel by the way. We don't speak the name of the Elden Lord of Tall's name in these parts. Not anymore. As Mikasa doubts Eren's motives, the battle continues when, suddenly, Zeke arrives and standing atop Wall Maria, attacks and destroys Marley airships, turning the tide back in favor of the Jaegerists. Back with the Survey Corps, they force the Jaegerists to free the imprisoned Shadis and jailed soldiers. This is when Pixis offers to lead a group of soldiers who were tainted by wine to go out and attack Marley. While they prepare, Mikasa surprisingly takes off her scarf as the Jaegerist Lewis notices and takes it later on. Niall then is able to reunite Falco with Gabby and Colt, the latter who is armed with military's finest, an anti-Titan rifle. Though, as the Browse family passes the building they're hiding in, Gabby realizes that the Devils of Paradise she hated so much are actually nothing more than people just like her. She's finally realized the hatred she had and how wrong it was, and so Falco as well, seeing this, decides to confess his love for Gabby as he could turn at any moment. Colt, seeing this, decides it would be best to rush them to Zeke so he knows it won't accidentally turn Falco before they escape the shouting distance. As the War of Paradise rages on, however, Peek is able to fake her own death, which gives Magath a clear shot at Zeke's nape and takes it, toppling the beastly titan. This prompts Eren to start making his way to Zeke's fallen titan body. As he does this, the Jaw titan attacks. However, Eren is able to smite Porco to the ground, smashing Porco's nape and subsequently him. Magath tries to fire on Eren once more, but Flock and his men are able to distract and attack the cart titan. Meanwhile, Reiner now having Eren pinned, reaches out to Porco when he triggers Marcel's memories about Reiner. As this happens, it's revealed that Zeke is alive and prepares to scream. But Colt arrives and pleads with Zeke to let him and Falco escape first as he drank his spinal fluid wine. Reluctantly, Zeke apologizes to Colt and screams, turning everyone on Paradis who was tainted into a pure titan and scorching cold in the process. Zeke then orders Falco to eat Reiner, but instead he eats Porco, who proclaims in his dying breaths that he was always a better man than Reiner ever was. The Survey Corps then attack the cart and armored titan with thunder spears, which allows Eren to then reach Zeke. However, the vengeful Gabby Braun brandishes her rifle taken from Colt and takes aim, firing and decapitating Eren. His head hits Zeke just before he dies, and there they are transported to the Paths. There he meets Zeke, who is chained down by King Fritz's vow renouncing war, and a little girl, the founding titan herself, Founder Ymir. 
Approaching them from the coordinate, Aaron states he actually never trusted or meant to follow Zeke's plan and goes to command Ymir. However, it's revealed that Ymir can only follow orders from those with royal blood. This allows Zeke to de-chain himself and in turn shackle Eren to the sand. Zeke then decides to relive Eren's memories of himself and Grisha to convince him to follow his plan. However, the opposite occurs as Zeke witnesses Grisha's memories and they find out that Grisha had foregone his duty as an Eldian and instead allowed Eren to do what he wanted in life. Eren then tells Zeke that he should have never thought that they were the same as Eren was born free, while Zeke is still unable to cope and move past Grisha and his lofty ideals. Though still stubborn says he will still go about his plan until it's revealed to Zeke that he was talking to Aaron all along, even before he became the attack and founding Titan. As they witness Grisha confront Sister Frida, it's shown that the driving motivator to have Grisha consume the founding Titan was actually Aaron himself. Grisha then breaks down and sees Zeke, who then warns him that Aaron's goal will be the one to come true, not his. He then holds Zeke and apologizes as he regrets everything that he did to him as a child. This pretty much incapacitates him as Grisha pleads to Zeke to get him to stop Eren. After delving into Grisha's memories, Zeke is horrified to discover that Eren had deliberately influenced Grisha's actions in order to gain control of the Founding Titan and shape the future. Despite Zeke's attempts to initiate the euthanasian plan through Ymir, Eren breaks free from his chains to pursue Ymir towards the coordinate. Meanwhile, a flashback reveals Ymir's origins as the first Titan, created after being hunted down for a minor mistake and transformed by a parasitic entity. Over time, Ymir's powers were exploited by Fritz and his descendants, with her soul being trapped into paths for 2,000 years. In the present, Eren offers Ymir the freedom to choose and she aligns with him, resulting in the release of thousands of wall titans in the beginning of the rumbling. While some characters are relieved that Eren is not working with Zeke, others realize that the scale of the attack is far greater than necessary to defend Paradise Island. Eren uses his power as the founding titan to telepathically declare his intentions to destroy all life beyond the island. Eren leads the Wall Titans in a destructive march towards the rest of the world, while Reiner and Gabby search for Falco and Reiner is injured protecting her. Despite Reiner's discouragement, Gabby is determined to stop Eren. Meanwhile, pure titans created by Zeke wreak havoc in Shinganshina. Connie plans to feed Falco to his mother to turn her human again, while Gabby saves Kaya and Nicolo protects her from the Survey Corps. Armin, Mikasa, John, and Shaddis rally the remaining Jaegerists and cadets to fight the pure titans, eventually succeeding with the help of Lois. Onyan Capone and Yelena witness the rumbling with confusion, while Flock returns to punish the volunteers. Armin and Mikasa meet with Gabby, who urges Armin to convince Eren that not everyone deserves to die. Armin realizes that Eren has commanded all titan hardening to be undone, including Annie's Crystal. The Wall Titans march towards the horizon as the Tross District inhabitants debate the human toll and destruction caused by Eren's rumbling strategy. Hitch locates a feeble Annie who has been released from her crystal and aids her in escaping the military police. Annie confesses to Hitch that she no longer desires to fight and wishes to reunite with her adoptive father and Marley. Despite his abusive treatment and upbringing of her as a warrior, he regretfully admitted to not treating her like a daughter. In Liberio, Mr. Leonhart and his Eldian group attempt to persuade the Marleyan guards about the imminent threat of the rumbling, but are met with resistance, culminating in Leonhart resorting to physical altercation. Meanwhile, Shaddis predicts the Jaegerist will take control of the island and anticipates his own purging. He advises the cadets to follow them for the time being. Armin readies himself to pursue Connie and Falco with Gabby, expressing frustration with Mikasa for her concern for Eren, whom he believes is a lost cause. However, he later apologizes and acknowledges that Erwin should have been resurrected in his place. 
Mikasa notices her scarf is now missing. Elsewhere, Flock discloses that Aaron revealed his plan to him 10 months ago and that he always knew Aaron would manipulate Zeke. With the Jaegerists' support, Flock confronts the volunteers, presenting with the ultimatum of submitting to the new Eldian Empire or facing death, as demonstrated by the shooting of one of their members. He then attempts to persuade a shaken John and Mikasa to abandon their fight and retire as heroes of Paradis, invoking the deaths of Hanj and Levi. Falco wakes up, having lost his memory of the recent battle, and appears uneasy about Connie. Then, in the end credits, Peek and Magath discuss the rumbling when Hanj arrives with the severely injured Levi. Finally, in the post credit scene, the audience sees the wall in ruins as Peek and Magath converse with Hanj while she accompanies the wounded Levi. As the sun sets on the departing wall titans, the Trost district is torn between the lives lost and devastation caused by Eren's rumbling strategy. Hanj leads the charge against the pursuing Jaegerists and sets up camp in the woods to tend to Levi's wounds. A message from Eren to the Eldians reaches them as they come across Peek and Magath. Hanj and Levi propose an alliance with them to take down Zeke. Meanwhile, Connie arrives in Ragako village with Falco, intending to feed him to his Titan mother. Armin and Gabby eventually do intervene, and Connie has a change of heart. They all then return to Shiganshina, where Annie joins their group after abandoning Hitch. Mikasa refuses to join the Jaegerists and recovers her scar from Lois. Flock orders the execution of Yelena and Onyan Capone, but Peak's cart titan saves them from certain death. As they all join forces, Annie notices someone watching them from a window. With supplies in hand, they set off to save the world, meeting up with Reiner along the way. John imagines a future where he can live a peaceful and content life with his family. However, his reverie is broken when Hanj approaches him and Mikasa, imploring them to join forces with the remaining Survey Corps and Marlians to prevent Aaron's planned genocide. Initially hesitant, John ultimately agrees to help after being reminded of his fallen comrade, Marco. At their camp in the forest, the Survey Corps and Marlians clash with Magath over the origins of the conflict, sparking a heated debate about who the real devils are. Meanwhile, Annie challenges Mikasa on whether she could bring herself to kill Eren if she fails to persuade him to end the rumbling. Though they are on the brink of a fight, they resolve to approach Eren before taking more drastic measures. As they discuss their options over a meal of Hanji stew, they consider the flying boat as a potential means of reaching the founding titan. However, they are uncertain of Eren's exact locations. Yelena asserts that she has no knowledge of his whereabouts, but Magath and Peek reveal that she is a Marlian who had posed as an Eldian to infiltrate Zeke's group. Yelena forces the group to confront their own actions and motivations for saving the world, including Reiner and Annie's role in Marco's death, which prevented the warrior's exposure. John becomes enraged at Reiner's self-pity and brutally attacks him, but the others intervene. Gabby pleads with John for help in rescuing her family and Marley, but he storms off. The following morning, John returns and apologizes to Gabby before agreeing to join their alliance. However, he admits that he is still unable to forgive Reiner. Peek scouts ahead and discovers that the Jaegerists have taken over the port, with Flock holding Kiyomi Azumabito hostage. As Hanj and Magath observe the occupied port, they notice that the flying boat is still intact, but it is at risk of being destroyed by the Jaegerists at any moment. The massive amount of steam indicates that the Wall Titans have already crossed the sea, so the group needs to act quickly. They realize that the Azumabito engineers are required to service and prepare the boat for flight but protecting them from the Jaegerists, even by wiping them out, is a dilemma that Connie opposes. Reiner and Annie come to the conclusion that battling their former comrades in the Survey Corps is not the solution. Meanwhile, Magath resorts to torturing Yelena to extract information about Eren's whereabouts. Yelena agrees to talk only if the group takes her with them. Magath has a change of heart and apologizes to the Survey Corps for burdening them with the past. He asks them to overlook the bloodshed temporarily, but Armin refuses, believing in a peaceful solution. 
The engineers break the devastating news to Hanja's group that the flying boat won't be ready for at least 12 hours, forcing them to come up with a new plan to save Liberio from the Wall Titans. Kiyomi suggests taking the ship to Odaya, a Marleyan coastal city where the Azumabito own a hangar. However, their escape is hindered by the Jaegerists, who are determined to stomp them. Annie and Reiner step up to defend their group by transforming into Titans, while Mikasa, Hanj, John, and Connie fight alongside them. Seeing the Titans struggling, Falco musters up the courage to join the fray, while Peek jumps in after delivering Levi, Gabby, Yelena, and Onyanyu Capone to Magath. Just when it seems like all is lost, Hanj spawns a train of Jaegerist reinforcements that suddenly explodes and derails, followed by Falco charging into the chaos by transforming into the Jaw Titan. Flock tries to destroy the ship's hull with a thunder spear, but is shot down by Gabby and falls into the sea. Falco loses control and tries to eat Peak, but Magath manages to extract him from his Titan. The group eventually spots a captured Marleyan cruiser at the shore, and Magath decides to stay behind to destroy it, accompanied by Shaddis, who had followed them to the port and taken out the train. In a moment of mutual respect, the two men destroy the cruiser, sacrificing their own lives to save the world, while the rest of the group sells off to Odaya. Hanj then delivers the heartbreaking news that Marley and Liberio cannot be saved, causing Annie to feel obviously distressed. After being persuaded to stay, Annie questions Mikasa once again, whether she can let Eren be killed to stop the rumbling, confessing that she's exhausted from all of the violence. Several months before the assault on Liberio, the scouts arrived on the Marley shoreline. On their way to visit Azumabito at her home, they witnessed the persecution received by subjects of Ymir first and after rescuing a young thief named Ramsey from a mob of Marleyans. Azumabito informs the group that Marley has begun cracking down on subjects of Ymir who escaped their internment camps through use of blood tests. Hanj hopes to forge peace by allying with the subjects of Ymir Protection Group. Discovering that Eren has gone missing, Mikasa tracks him down to Ramsey's home. Eren questions Mikasa's loyalty to him, asking what he means to her, to which she is taken aback and calls him her family. The rest of the group catches up, and they spend the night partying with Ramsey's family. The next day, at the Protection Group's assembly, the representative of the Protection Group declares that the subjects of Ymir, who don't view themselves as Eldians, should be freed, while the Devils of Paradis should be exterminated, which receives cheers from the audience. Seeing this and feeling deeply dejected, Eren departs and doesn't contact the scouts again until the assault on Liberio. Mikasa then ruminates on that time and wonders if different choices had been made, could things have turned out differently? Flashbacks reveal Eren meeting Yelena and agreeing to follow Zeke's euthanasia plan while actually informing Flock and Historia of his real plans, with the latter against his plan and deciding to get pregnant in an attempt to stop him, and Zeke telling him that Ackermans are not compelled by blood to protect a host and that Mikasa is devoted to him simply because she loves him. Eren tells Zeke that he wants his friends to live long, happy lives after his death. In the present, the Global Alliance makes a futile attempt with their navy to stop Eren and the Rumbling from reaching Marley. They are easily destroyed by the Titans, and Eren declares his intentions to destroy the world as he and the Colossal Titans set foot on the mainland. The cataclysmic event known as the Rumbling persists, with the Colossal Titans claiming innumerable lives, including Ramsey and his brother, Grisha's parents, and devastating civilizations worldwide. In the midst of this unfolding apocalypse, the vessel transporting the scout regiment and warrior unit docks at Odaya. Annie, convinced of her father's demise, opts to stay aboard with Gabby, Falco, Yelena, and the Azumabito clan. The remaining warriors, scouts, and Onyan Kampone set off on a flying boat determined to confront Eren. The following day, as they prepare for departure, Flock, who miraculously survived the port battle, sabotages the flying boat's hull before meeting his end at the hands of Mikasa. However, the craft's repairs are cut short by the sudden arrival of the rumbling. 
Hanj designates Armin as the new leader of the Survey Corps and valiantly faces the Colossal Titans alone, providing a vital distraction for the others to achieve liftoff. Hanj is welcomed to the afterlife by Erwin, Moblet, and other departed comrades, assuring them that the commander's duty has been fulfilled. While en route to confront Eren, the scouts and warriors engage in discussion regarding their plans to address the crisis. Armin remains hopeful for a peaceful resolution. Unexpectedly, Eren ushers them into the dimension known as the Paths and conveys the grim reality that halting the rumbling necessitates his demise. He emphasizes that their freedom to act is paramount, just as he exercises his own freedom to forge ahead. Back on the ship, Falco discloses a potential ability of his titan, flight. Meanwhile, a multitude of refugees from Liberio, including the families of the warriors, seeks sanctuary in Fort Salta a Marleyan stronghold. They witness a squadron of airships launching an assault on Eren and his titans, but their hopes are crushed when the Beast Titan, which has materialized atop Eren's skeletal figure, swiftly annihilates the airship. Just then, salvation arrives in the form of the flying boat, as both scouts and warriors disembark. Peak and Reiner undergo transformation, while the latter successfully immobilizing the Beast Titan. In this critical moment, Armin challenges Eren, questioning the essence of his freedom. Financially support the channel by becoming a patron, where you'll gain access to my mega One Piece arc reviews and first impressions. Thanks for watching, Bye bye